In this video, we will calculate the moment of inertia of a thin rod, which is a rather quick and easy calculation in classical mechanics. Before we start, let's review the concept of moment of inertia. This quantity tells us how much torque we need in order to rotate an object. This is very similar to mass being the quantity that tells us how much force we need to move an object. The moment of inertia is defined as the integral over density times r squared d3r. Note the small perpendicular sign here. If you consider a rigid object and some small volume element d3r, then r perpendicular is the distance between this volume element and the axis of rotation under an angle of 90 degrees, or simply the shortest possible distance. There is also a more general way to talk about moments of inertia using the inertia tensor, but this is not important for this video. For a point particle, this integral reduces to m times r squared, so the units of i are kilograms times meters squared. Consider now a thin rod spinning around its center of mass and then also around one end. We denote the length of the rod with an uppercase L and the other dimensions are negligible. This is what we mean by a thin rod. Which of the moments of inertia do you think is larger? In other words, in which case do we have to apply more torque to rotate the rod? Well, time to find out. Let's first consider the rotation around its center. We put the origin of our coordinate system in the center of the rod and can then integrate from minus L over 2 to plus L over 2. Remember, since this is a one-dimensional problem, we just have dr here. The density rho is given by mass per volume, and the rod's volume is just L. Since the density is constant in our example, we can write it in front of the integration. Next, the shortest perpendicular distance of some volume element to the axis of rotation is simply r, the distance to the origin, because we chose our coordinate system to be in the center of the rod. So the integration results in ml squared over 12. Now we take the rotation to be around one end of the rod. We could do a similar calculation, where we now integrate from 0 to L, but it's much easier to apply the parallel axis theorem here. We already did a video on this theorem, so take a look for more details. Using this theorem, the moment of inertia I2 is given by I1 plus m times L over 2 squared, which yields ML squared over 3. Finally, we can see that I1 is smaller than I2, so we would need more torque to rotate the rod around its end compared to an equivalent rotation around its center of mass. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.